make sure to check out my Patreon for exclusive videos never before seen on YouTube. And don't forget to also check out the memberships on my channel page to join and gain access to perks and see videos early. Make sure to click the subscribe button and hit the bell and be notified of new videos. All the support goes to the production of the channel for better content. Now let's get into the video. Real quick before the video starts, a quick announcement. I have updated my Patreon page and changed the tiers within it, as I'll be posting content on there regularly. The content which will not go onto my YouTube page, from personal life stories and more Dragon Ball content, for all of you to enjoy. I have changed the tiers and pricing, as times are hard in the world. So for $1, you can have full access to my Patreon page and the content within it, and it goes towards production and support of my channel. So, if you want to check it out and see some content that will not be on YouTube, go check it out for $1 and show your support. Go join my Patreon, now let's get into the what if. What if Goku was born in Ultra Ego? Now real quick before I start the video, I want to explain how this is going to work. Also, before this video officially starts, I also wanted to promote my Patreon, as I will be doing a review video on Patreon talking about the most current manga chapter, and Gohan has finally faced off against his father, Master Ultra Instinct versus Beast Gohan. I'm really excited to talk about it. So if you guys are interested in seeing my take on that, in my opinion, go check it out down below. Now, what if Goku was born in Ultra Ego? Now we have to take a grain of salt with this, as there needs to be some realism, even though it's far out there. If Goku was automatically in Ultra Ego and born in it, he would pretty much Hakai everything and destroy it. This guy could sneeze and it would destroy the entire planet. Goku here has Ultra Ego within him, but as he grows older, he will be able to access this form much quicker than you guys think. So I just wanted to display that so you guys know, so don't attack me in the comments, all right, and understand that I have to start the story somehow, and Goku just can't Hakai the whole entire planet Vegeta. Now anyway, the story would play out the exact same. Goku was born with a very, very, very low power level. Now, of course, this time around, Bardock would sacrifice himself fighting Frieza. Planet Vegeta was still destroyed, and Goku would still be sent to planet Earth, where he would be trained under Grandpa Gohan. For many years, Son Goku would finally be able to grow up on his own, as sadly, Grandpa Gohan passed away. This time around, Goku, when he transformed into a grade 8, destroyed the entire valley and area, but he completely Hakai'd Grandpa Gohan without even knowing that he did. As he reverted back, he never realized. Grandpa Gohan just disappeared. No body, no nothing. Sadly, Grandpa Gohan ceased to exist, as Goku has Hakai'd him. As the years would then pass on, Bulma would still arrive to find the four-star Dragon Ball the same as before. She would offer herself to Goku, as Goku would obviously say no. They would then find the turtle the same as before, giving him seawater taken to the ocean, where they would then meet Master Roshi. Master Roshi would actually be interested in Goku because he senses an incredible pressure within Goku, an incredible power within him. They would then go on their little adventures, facing the Red Ribbon Army. Goku would learn to train under Master Roshi with the likes of Krillin. I know I'm bouncing around this, the Dragon Ball Saga a lot, but relatively, it would go the exact same. But as Goku trains with Roshi, and especially when he learns to train with Korin, this is when he starts learning how to use energy and ki much better than he did before. This is when Goku would accidentally fire his second Hakai ever. It was a Hakai ball that was no bigger than a pebble, but it would almost hit Korin and it would hit his staff and completely obliterate it. Korin was in awe, as he didn't know he had this ability, and Korin doesn't even know what it is, but it's powerful. He would actually take Goku, and this is... Remember, this is when he just started training under Korn, that this is a bit higher than his pay grade. Goku would still have to get the power pull and go up to Kami's lookout. This time around, he would be trained by Kami a lot earlier. Do you mean King Piccolo would still revive himself and, of course, make himself younger, as we all know? At this time around, Goku did not drink the Ultra Divine Water when he fights Demon King Piccolo. Once when Goku fights Demon King Piccolo, remember... He had training under Kami. Now, you can argue that he was given the water anyway to grow even stronger. For what if purposes, let's say that he did, as it would make sense for Kami to still make him go drink the water to grow his power even more. Now, by this point, Goku is starting to know about the Hakai power, 
but he doesn't know how to access it just yet. That will take a lot of training to use his power. His fight with Demon King Piccolo will be actually a bit different. Goku's a little bit stronger than his original self. Goku had a power level of around 260, the same as Demon King Piccolo. Goku this time around would have a power level of actually around 280 to 300, so he's a little bit stronger because he trained with Kami and Popo. And he also had the Ultra Divine Water, so he's a little bit stronger. This time around, when Goku was battling Demon King Piccolo, it was still a very, very close battle. Goku was still stronger and faster than Demon King Piccolo, but Demon King Piccolo had more skill and knowledge against Goku, and more experience. He was able to give the beat down on Goku, but Goku started realizing that something was happening. As then, Goku would begin powering up. Goku's hair would then stand up more, way more, and turn purple. His eyes would then turn yellow. As then a flaming purple aura would then appear, as his muscles would then grow even bigger, Goku felt this rush of this egotistical Saiyan pride that hit him that he never felt before. That he just wants to kill and fight and just get hurt and do what a Saiyan loves to do. As you get as you indulge inside of your egotistical maniac side for Vegeta's friend for Vegeta fans. Demon King Piccolo would then punch Goku, but it would do no damage to him, not even make him flinch. As Goku would then smile like crazy, looking at him, telling him to hit him harder and to actually give him a fight. Demon King Piccolo would then fire his most powerful attack at Goku, but Goku would then sit there and tank the attack like it was nothing. We don't know the exact multiplier for Ultra Ego. We do know that it is relative to Ultra Instinct, where Vegeta was able to catch up to Goku. Now, the power-up might actually be a little bit less of a multiplier than Ultra Instinct. Now, hear me out. It's because the form gives you a big power-up on top of the fact that you grow stronger as the fight goes on, the more damage that you take. So Goku, obviously here, is still far too powerful for Demon King Piccolo. Demon King Piccolo has 0.01% chance, not even that, even less. Now, I want you guys in the comments below to tell me what do you guys think the multiplier would be for Ultra Ego, and I want to see it. And what would the multiplier be at its maximum potential after when like Goku's severely wounded and not before he gets too wounded as that's the weakness of Ultra Ego. If you get damaged too much, you basically collapse because you can't fight no more, even though you want to keep going. That's the only downside of Ultra Ego is you tank damage, but if you take too much damage, you're going to have to fall down. Let me know in the comments down below what you think the multiplier is. I'm really curious to see what you guys have. Let me know and I want to see your arguments for it. I definitely think it's millions of times stronger, easily, because as we know, Saint Scholar, he did an incredible mul mul multiplier list of the Saiyan forms and the God forms. And he was saying that Super Saiyan God, in realistically, is roughly 40 million. Now imagine Ultra Ego, which is hundreds of millions, maybe millions of millions, I don't even know, billions of times stronger than base, which is literally nuts. But for what if purposes? I'm going to start right in the chat, and I want y'all to be mad at me, okay? Goku gets a 100,000 times boost to his power, which is still insane if you think about it, but that's how high I'm making it for right now. So, because of that, since Goku would theoretically get a 100,000 times boost, I want y'all to do the math. How strong would Goku get? Goku as a kid, we have a power level of 30 million. And this is base Ultra Ego. This is not him when he's getting injured and growing much stronger. Because he has a power level of 30 million, he could get hundreds, he can get dozens of times stronger than that. You know, he can get 10 times stronger and get to 300 million. So do you see how busted the form is very quickly? But now cutting back to the what if, Goku would absolutely demolish Demon King Piccolo without a sweat. Demon King Piccolo would still spit out the egg because you gotta have Piccolo in here. And Goku would then actually raise up his hand and he would yell Hakai. As Hakai would then shoot out of his hand and hit Demon King Piccolo, completely erasing him from existence. Now Kami is still alive because Demon King Piccolo spit out Piccolo Jr. So Piccolo Jr. is alive. So Kami's not obliterated, as we all know. Everybody was shocked at Goku's form. Goku would quickly lose the form and he would pass out and almost die from key exhaustion. 
as the form took so much out of him. By this point, Goku would then be taken up to Kami's lookout, and Goku would still keep his tail, as Kami cannot remove his tail because of how powerful he's become. Now, I, I know this is a, a crazy pull, but yes, Ultra Ego and the damage that he took gave him a bigger boost in power. Goku got a 2 times Zenkai because of this. This would mean that his power level is 600. He was only 15 to 16 years old. So, cutting to 2 to 3 years later, Goku would be training intensely under Kami. With Goku actually being stronger, he could actually survive the room in spirit in time longer than before. And with Kami's help, this is a bit out of his pay grade too, as he's never seen power like this, but maybe one person can help Goku. But Kami tries contacting him, and he would agree. This is the same time when Goku would go to the World Martial Art Tournament and meet with his friends first before he goes on another long training, as he doesn't just want to leave all his friends behind. Goku would still meet up for the 21st Budokai Tournament, and he would still meet Bulma, Krillin, and all them the same as before. This is when Piccolo Jr. would then make himself known and challenge Goku as the final contender. Piccolo would easily defeat his opponents in his way. Goku would still meet Chi-Chi the same as before, as his adventures were still the same. And Chi-Chi, again, Goku's a bit silly. Goku thought that marriage was some kind of food, so he would still agree to marry her and hold his promise. But the marriage is going to have to wait, as Goku kind of needs to go train soon after this, but we'll get into this a little bit later. By this point, Piccolo Jr. and Goku would be the final contenders of the round. Goku's far more powerful than Piccolo Jr. Goku had a power level of 600 before he started training, and he went in the room of spirit in time even more. Goku got dozens of times stronger, and it makes sense as to why, especially the Room of Spirit in Time is 10 times gravity, which some people seem to forget that. So if Goku's training in that gravity as well, he's only going to grow stronger. Now, just for crazy purposes, Goku got roughly 5 times stronger, as it would kind of make sense, you know, since he wasn't in there for the full time. But even if so, he has a power level of over 3000, so he's easily more powerful, easily more powerful than Piccolo Jr. You can argue that Piccolo Jr. is a little bit more powerful because Piccolo Jr. is training for a higher goal against Goku. He could maybe even be in the 400s to 500s. It would not be enough to defeat Goku. Goku would have easily defeated Demon King Piccolo. And yes, I said the Demon King because in Dragon Ball, Piccolo calls himself the Great Demon King. But Piccolo Jr., either way, or Piccolo, would still lose no matter what. Goku was going to go off to go train under King Kai, as he learned his name, he would then stay with Chi-Chi for the next few months to get married, blah blah, and move in, but Goku would finally have to leave as Chi-Chi would understand. Chi-Chi would become pregnant and have Gohan, the same as before. Goku would be the father that went to go get the milk and not be around for a little while, as Goku would then arrive to go see King Yemma. King Yemma was confused why a living being was here, and why is he here? He then states that King Kai purposely wanted him to come see him, as King Kai heard about Goku saying Hakai. Because remember, Kami was there, and he had this purple energy that just completely destroyed and vaporized whatever was in front of him. King Kai knows this, and this terrifies him as he has to see this. So, because of this, this is when, of course, Goku would then go run the snake way the same as before. Now, this time around, Goku being much stronger than he was, and I could even say that he could fly at this point, as never really went into that Goku could fly. I guess he just got strong enough to do it which doesn't make any sense, but Goku can fly. He would still arrive within a few months' time of running, the same as before, a month or so, and he would meet King Kai, who would tell King Kai a joke to train him. King Kai wants to see that power. King Kai would then hold up a random piece of metal that he would find, and he tells Goku to, to do that Hakai thing that apparently he can do. King Kai thinks he's bluffing, as there's only one being that he knows that can do that. It destroyed his planet, after all, because he defeated him at video games. Because of this, Goku would then say Hakai, and a small tennis ball sized Hakai would then fly out of his hand and completely destroy the metal cube that he made. This would baffle King Kai. He then wants to see Goku's form, as he asked, can he go into it? Goku states that he can, but he gets a bit wild whenever he does, and it drains a lot of energy. King Kai just wants to see it, as Goku would then transform into Ultra Ego. King Kai was blown back by this incredible power that Goku had. And this is definitely God energy. This is definitely Destroyer. King Kai would then tell Goku about the 12 universes. He would tell Goku way more information than he ever did. 
telling him about only one other being on this universe can use the power that he showed, and his name is Lord Beerus. Goku wants to fight this Lord Beerus guy. He sounds super strong. King Kai would instantly say, no, 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 you don't understand. I sense how powerful your form is. It's very, very, very strong. You're possibly one of the strongest beings in the universe easily. But to him, you're nothing but just a small little grain of sand to an ocean compared to Beerus. Goku would be kind of let down. He still wants to fight him anyway. He can learn power from him. But because of this, Goku would then begin his training. As King Kai would help Goku learn key energy more and do everything in his power to help Goku control this Ultra Ego form better. So much so that he's back against the wall. So he would then use the help of the three other Kais who control the other sides, the East, the North, and the South, as to help them out in the West to also all join together. And even the Grand Kai can all join together to help Goku learn this power. As Goku has a few years, Goku would train for up to two to three years with King Kai. Now, we know that Goku got 18.8 .8 times stronger after a few months of training, after about three. So you guys can go do the math if you want. I'm just gonna highball it. But in reality though, if Goku got 18.8 .8 times stronger with three months of training, realistically, he basically, he would get four times stronger than 18. So that would basically, basically mean that he gets 72 times stronger the two years that he was gone. So in reality, he, within two years of training, he would get 144 times boost to his power. That's also minusing the fact that he's being trained by other Kais. So, timing this, of course, by 3,000, his base power level would be 432,000, which is almost as powerful as First Form Frieza, and he's didn't even start the Saiyan Saga yet. Goku, by this point, can access Ultra Ego normally, as his body can handle it way more, to where now he can access it like it's nothing. Goku has also learned more about the Hakai abilities, and he also knows the weaknesses of this form, that if he gets too crazy into it, he can injure himself too much and lose the power, so he has to keep his mind in check. Goku would then return home, find out that he has a son, and disappear for the next 20 years, but all jokes aside, he would then go see Gohan and spend time for the next three years. As three years would then pass, Goku would still keep a light training to keep himself in shape, as he would then see his brother Raditz arrive on Earth. Goku would still be at Kami's house, showing off Gohan to everybody else after meeting for about five years. Raditz would still make himself known. This time around, when Raditz kicked Krillin away into the building, times would change. As once when Raditz grabbed Gohan, this is where something would change. Even before he would grab Gohan or even try to, Goku would then instantly grab his arm and throw Raditz away into the water. Raditz would then be pushed with so much force with that pull that he would then land on an island nearby. Goku would then fly off and fight Raditz. But because of this, Goku would then showcase why Raditz has no chance. Raditz would then laugh and say that you just got a lucky shot in. My power level is 1,500. Goku would begin powering up. As Raditz was in shock as he was saying out loud that his power level is well almost 24,000 before his scouter would then explode. On the other end, Vegeta heard that. He talked to Nappa on the comp, saying that, did you hear that? Raditz yelled out that someone had a power level of 24,000. Nappa would think it's a big lie, but Vegeta's actually curious that he went to go find another Saiyan and he has that high of a power level. Maybe a scouter's busted. But maybe they should go over there and see what happened, since his, Raditz is not replying anymore, which means that he must have been killed. They would not be interested in the Dragon Balls as they don't know about it, nor does Frieza know about the Dragon Balls in reality because they never stated it. Now, though, because of this fact, Frieza would never go to Namek initially, he would still be ruling over planets. Goku would still fight Raditz the same as before, but this time around, Raditz has no chance. Raditz knows that his brother can easily kill him with a single punch. He would then beg for mercy. Remember, Raditz is a coward. If Raditz has no chance against somebody, he's going to give up. What else can he do? He would then beg for mercy and apologize, and he would then explain himself and what he's doing. Goku would then laugh and say, okay, no problem, as Raditz was shocked with how forgiving he was. Goku states just as long as you don't hurt anybody or destroy the planet or anything, you're fine with us. Raditz would then complain and apologize to the Z fighters for what he did. And he would then explain who Nappa and Vegeta is, and he would state that with your power level, you might be able to beat them, but they can also turn into great apes. 
This is when Goku would actually reveal his tail. As he says, what do you mean? Raditz thought he didn't have one because it was hidden behind his pants. So, Goku, Raditz would say, well, never mind then. As Goku would state that, well, do you think those guys would be coming over here then? Raditz doesn't know, and he estimates that even if they did, it would take well over a year plus for them to even arrive. During this time, a year would then pass as they were still training on Earth. Raditz has settled down near Goku's home, and he actually got nice with Launch. So Launch actually likes Raditz, and they kind of got together. As that's a nice little ship, I know everybody does this. Vegeta and Nappa would then appear and make themselves known by completely obliterating a city. Goku would then fly in and challenge to fight both of them by himself in the rocky wasteland. Vegeta would then agree and Nappa would agree as they would then fly off. Now Goku saw what Nappa did and destroyed the whole entire town, but it was too late to get to them. By this point in time, Nappa would then go up first and scan his power level, seeing that he only had a power level of 2000, which is nothing. Nothing to him, nothing to Vegeta. Goku would then begin powering up, as his power level would then shoot up to 20,000, which Vegeta would then crush his scour alongside Nappa, thinking that it's busted. Goku would deliver a single elbow to his stomach, similar to what he did to Raccoon, and kill Nappa with a single strike. Vegeta was utterly shocked by the power that Goku had. Maybe he's able to spike his power or something. Vegeta thinks that it's a fluke, and Nappa just dropped his guard. He would then start his fight with Son Goku. The fight would be intense, as Goku, again, was not even trying. Vegeta had no chance against Goku, and but Goku wants to see what Vegeta's capable of, as he knows he's different from that other guy. Way stronger than his brother is. Raditz would be on the far side, watching from the background, as he's not going to get into that, but he's very happy to see that the Prince of All Saints is getting a taste for his medicine, as he would actually cheer his brother on a little bit. Goku and Raditz's relationship has grown a lot during that year, as Raditz pushed past that silliness aside, and he's proud of his younger brother. Vegeta was getting absolutely demolished by Goku, and Vegeta would try his Gallic gun and everything else. It would not work, as he can't try the fake moon because the darn Saiyan can transform into it as well. He has a tail. Vegeta ran out of options. Vegeta would then try to attack his friends, which Goku would easily deflect the attack, and deliver a powerful blow to Vegeta, so powerful that it would blow the top armor off his body. And this, Goku thought it would kill Vegeta. As Vegeta would then fall over, Goku would then walk away and say that it's done. But to his surprise, Vegeta would actually get up, which would shock Goku with how his how durability and how he was not giving up. Goku respected that with Vegeta. Goku would then tell Vegeta to just leave his planet, to never return. Vegeta would then tell him that you should, you will regret sparing my life, as he would then leave in his spaceship, flying away. Now, because of this, they never spoke of the Dragon Balls because nobody officially died in the Z group, so no one officially died, and everybody would stay on Earth happily ever after. But until we all know, when Vegeta arrives, word would quickly get around that Vegeta lost somebody who easily defeated him in Nappa. This would reach Zarbon and Dodoria, who would tell Frieza about it. Frieza would actually be a little bit interested because there is a Saiyan that powerful that he was able to defeat Vegeta that easily. And not to mention, too, maybe he can be recruited. So Frieza would actually send out a few of his subordinates, Zarbon and mainly Dodoria, out with, with a couple henchmen to Earth to try and go recruit Goku. They would quickly be met with destruction as the last thing that Zarbon heard from Dodoria was that this Saiyan had a power level of over 40,000 and he would be destroyed. Zarbon would then tell Frieza about it, which would then spike his interest. Frieza would slowly start heading his way there. He would then send the Ginyu Force over to the planet first, as then, Frieza was now interested. This Saiyan was incredibly powerful. Maybe he can recruit him or not. He can finally end the Saiyan race, as he was promised to do so by Beerus. Once when the Ginyu Force arrive on planet Earth, some events are going to be different here. Since they never went to Namek, the only difference here is that there will be no Dende just to get him out of the way. Because of this, Namekians were never killed, and Piccolo would never fuse with Nail. Now because of this, the Ginyu Force would then arrive, which Goku would then show up alongside Raditz and Piccolo and the others. The Ginyu Force was very powerful, but with Raditz actually training with Goku, Raditz has learned that Earth is now his new home. Raditz has actually grown a lot more powerful since then. He was able to actually hold his own against Jason Burder. Goku would have easily defeated Raccoon, 
and with the help of Gohan and Krillin, it would have been able to defeat Guldo's mental capabilities and defeat him very quickly. Now Vegeta actually followed the Ginyu Force on the way, as Frieza was right behind the Ginyu Force, as he was going to show up within the next few hours. The next being was Captain Ginyu. Now Captain Ginyu was a lot more powerful than his other comrades. He would then fight Goku, and Goku would easily kind of hold his own against him, until Goku would then showcase Ultra Ego in front of Captain Ginyu, which his scouter would then shatter at his power level, as it shot way past 200,000. He wants that power. As then, he would then shot Goku by doing change now. After he was swap bodies, Goku was shocked that he was in Captain Ginyu's body and he was in his. Captain Ginyu was powerful. He never felt so strong before. Now remember, he's not an Ultra Ego as he was back in base form, but even Goku's base form is very powerful. But if you guys remember, he could not utilize the full potential of the body yet as he's not used to it. So because of this, Goku was badly wounded because Captain Ginyu injured himself before he did the change now. They were now screwed. But Raditz would then come in and then start attacking Goku, overwhelming him. This is when Vegeta would actually make himself known and help them in a way and attack him and severely injure Goku. This is when Captain Ginyu would try to do the change now on Raditz, but then Goku would then jump in the way just in time. With Goku having his original body back, this is when Captain Ginyu would then try change now on Vegeta, as then Goku would then notice that there was a frog, a normal frog. He would then throw it and then Captain Ginyu's body would then be swapped. Vegeta in anger would then destroy Captain Ginyu's body, but Captain Ginyu was now stuck as a frog. Because of this, now that Frieza was right along his way, Goku was surprised that Vegeta was here. But is he here to help or is he here to destroy Earth? Vegeta would state that he's only here for his own personal gain. But the fact that Frieza's going to be here. And either way, Frieza was going to kill him no matter what, as he's tired of the Saiyan species. Now during this time, since Goku was severely wounded, he had to go heal up. Luckily, this time around, they did have Sensu Beans, but you have to remember that Krillin, yeah, Korn's place is far away, so they're going to have to fly over there. Right when they were doing that and taking Goku away, Frieza would then arrive. Once when Frieza arrived, they would then arrive back with the Sensu Beans, as then by this point in time, Goku was being recovered. Vegeta and Raditz would actually team up and go fight Frieza's first form. Now, Frieza was way too powerful for them, even in his first form. But they would still hold their own, as member, Vegeta never lost his tail, officially, in this one. But I mean, he did. But Raditz still has his, as Raditz would then use the open and mix, and he would then transform into a great ape, amplifying his power by 10 times. This would actually make Raditz relevant to Frieza. As I put Raditz's new power level since he's been training intensely, for weeks on end, the weirs on end, I would definitely put him roughly at around 50,000. Be mad at me, I don't care. But going great ape is 500,000. So Raditz would actually be able, and with full control, he would be able to keep up with Frieza and actually do damage to Frieza, keeping up with him. This will cause Frieza to go into his second form, which he would then absolutely destroy Raditz, reverting him back to his base form. With this being said, Goku was finally recovered, as in Goku would then arrive to face off against Frieza. Goku's base form was not strong enough to fight Frieza at all, as Frieza's second form was just too strong. They would then give Raditz a Sensu Beam, same with Vegeta, and they both got nice sized Zenkais. But Goku says to save them just in case something happens. Goku would then go fight Frieza, but as we know before, Goku would then try to use Kaioken, as with Kaioken times 10, he was able to injure Frieza and keep up with him. Now, mind you, this version of Goku is going to use Ultra Ego. As you guys remember, he learned how to control this form in a way. But if you fight Sinnoh for too long, he starts to lose his mind. Similar to how Vegeta did. Goku would then finally transform into Ultra Ego and shock Frieza, as that power seems very similar to Lord Beerus. He would then mutter his name out, as Vegeta was surprised that Frieza knew who that guy was. But it didn't matter, as Goku was sinister. Frieza would then transform into his final form, go into his full power state, which Goku would then allow. 
as he would let Frieza hit him with everything he has as Goku was smiling. As these punches did nothing to him, wasn't even hurting him. Goku said that it felt like you're tickling me with a feather. He was scared with how strong he's become. He would then grab Frieza and rip him in half. Frieza would then scream in agony as everybody was shocked with how powerful Goku was. Goku would then aim his hand and say that you're never going to come back. As he would then shoot a Hakai Blast, killing Frieza completely. Now you guys have to understand, when Goku's in this Ultra Ego state, he goes back to his Saiyan roots. He's very, very, very crazy. He's just like Vegeta is, so he has little compassion for life, especially in this state. He's kind of like if Goku never hit his head, he's his true self. So that's the reason why he was perfectly fine with killing Frieza. While if Goku did not have that, let's say he was an Ultra Instinct for some reason, or in any other form, he would have spared Frieza's life and given him one chance to get out of here. But this Goku didn't. This also means that Frieza would have never tried to blow up Earth as he's completely obliterated. This means that Frieza can never be brought back. I believe the only thing that can bring him back is Super Dragon Balls. Let me know in the comments down below if that's a possibility. But I believe it is. Super Dragon Balls can bring somebody back if that's already been hakai But if not, let me know. But Frieza's completely obliterated no matter what. They're not bringing him back. This also changes the entire story as no Golden Frieza, no Black Frieza, no nothing. So, after Frieza was completely obliterated, King Cold would then have heard about it, but he would have never gone over there. He only went over there because Frieza said so. He wanted to leave it alone. It's not worth his time. He has more important things to worry about. So he would stay on the far ends of the universe minding his own business, the same as before. And if Cooler was canon, even if Cooler showed up, he would have been instantly murked by everybody in his way. But if Cooler was canon, he would stay with King Cold, as he doesn't want to be killed like how Frieza did. But either way, Cooler's not canon, unfortunately, even though he's one of my favorite villains, so King Cold is not in this what if. But if he was, it would go badly for either way. Once when Frieza was then defeated, a few years of peace would then pass, Vegeta would actually live on planet Earth as he has nowhere else to go. He would start to like Bulma a little bit, as they would start liking each other. He would stay at the Capsule Corp and continue training, as Vegeta wants that power that he has. Now Vegeta thinks, and same with Raditz, think that Goku is the legendary Super Saiyan. That's his power. Goku must think it's the same thing, so they're calling it Super Saiyan. Even though it's way different than a Super Saiyan. It's Ultra Ego. But they believe that it is a Super Saiyan. Now Vegeta would then fly off on his own, and then he would go solo in space to try and learn new power, aka to grow stronger. Now, during this time, Raditz would continue living with Goku and Chi Chi and them, and would continue growing stronger. As he was with Launch, Raditz would then have his first child, and you can name her, or him, whatever you want, let's just say it was a girl, you can name her whatever you want in the comments. Gohan, by this point, didn't really go to Namek and have this crazy stuff, so he was still studying, but with Goku around, Gohan would still continue training and growing stronger, especially with Raditz on top of that, Chi-Chi can't really fight to off two Saiyans in reality. But Gohan still has some studies, plus he also does training. It's a perfect balance between the two, so Gohan is actually stronger than his original self because of the fact that he's had more training than he ever did before, because he's training non-stop. Because of this, Gohan's more sharp than ever before, and he's not as scared as before. During this time, over a year would then pass, someone would then arrive from the future. It was then Trunks. But Trunks was confused, as his timeline was completely different than this one. You guys have to remember that time is different in Dragon Ball. A time branch goes off one way, while the one stays the main way. So one little event could change the entire time. But Trunks was in shock, as Goku was still okay, and Goku had this awesome power. Trunks would then arrive at Goku's home, and him and Goku would then fly off to go fight, as Trunks would then turn Super Saiyan, which would shock everybody seeing this, even Vegeta and the others. Goku thinks, I've never seen that form before, he would then showcase Ultra Ego, and Trunks was absolutely shocked at this raw power that he's seen. He's never seen nothing like this before. He asked Goku if he can train him, at least for a little bit, so he can try and grow stronger. Goku would actually agree, and they would actually go in the room of spirit and time. This is when one day equals one year. And by this point, Bulma already has plenty of capsules to do so, and either way, Popa would have it ready. But because of this, this is when Goku would then train Trunks. Now remember, 
Goku cannot just give a God of Destruction form to Trunks. That's just not how it works in Dragon Ball. Goku barely knows the form himself, but with Trunks training intensely and growing, and Goku being so intelligent, Goku would find out a way how to master that Super Saiyan form. As Trunks just really know the form a little bit, but Goku would then see Trunks go through evolutions of the form. Trunks would then bulk up and go into Ascended Super Saiyan and then Third Grade Super Saiyan, but the fault with this form is that it's super, super slow and it drains her stamina. Goku would then train, help train Trunks to master this form and for him to basically be completely calm and completely tranquil in the Super Saiyan form, which would then make him stronger, which Trunks has grown much, much, much stronger since then. Trunks would then thank Goku for everything and then leave in his time machine. This also means that the Trunks that went back to the time would never die because of Cell, but that was a whole weird mishap that Cell went to another timeline, came back. It was completely ridiculous. But even if Cell did come back, it would completely change everything. So either way, Cell would still be on this planet and Cell would have still gotten a time machine. So by this point, they knew about Dr. Jiro, they knew about the heart virus and everything else that killed the Goku. But in this version, when Goku goes to find Dr. Jiro and the others, Goku never gets the heart virus in this one. Why does he not get the heart virus? It's because we don't know where the heart virus came from, but some people believe that it came from space and even from Namek. When Namek was being destroyed, Goku breathed in all those chemicals and those horrific bacteria and everything, but we don't truly know. We don't truly know where it came from. So for what it purposes, we're gonna say that he never got the heart virus. And even if he did, he's so strong now that he could just turn into his ultra ego form and it could basically destroy the heart virus. I don't know. But he never gets the heart virus either way. That would mean that he would have no trouble with Android 19. Now, the androids are a little bit more powerful than their original selves, but Dr. Jiro can only make them so powerful at this point in time. He doesn't know what God, God Obstruction Energy is. He can't control that power. That's a realm that he's never even touched before. Goku would completely obliterate Android 19, and Dr. Jiro would still be able to escape, because remember, they cannot sense his energy. Now, with this being said, Vegeta would then arrive shortly afterwards, ready to fight these androids. Dr. Jiro would then reanimate Android 17 and 18. They would then kill Dr. Jiro and then get Android 16. Vegeta would then tell Kakarot to stand back, as Vegeta would then transform into a Super Saiyan on his own. This is the golden one, as Vegeta was then... His pride was fully up there, but he knows it's not as strong as Kakarot, but he has something. As he feels like he's back up on the power table again... He would then fight Android 18, but Android 18 would then overwhelm Vegeta, but before she could break his arm and severely injure him, Goku would then cut in, appearing out of nowhere and grabbing her arm and throwing her back. This is what the androids wanted. As Android 16 walked up first to fight Goku, the androids held him back and said, wait, we want to fight him first. Goku would then transform into Ultra Ego, shocking them, as Goku would then fight both of them at the same time. With this being said, they had zero chance against this version of Goku. None of their punches were doing anything to him, as Goku was sinister. Goku, even in Ultra Ego state, would give them one chance to walk away and go live your own lives. They would not listen, as he would then go in front of Android 17 and shoot a key blast and completely obliterating him, not Hakaiing him, and it would then shock both Android 16 and then Android 18. Android 16 would then fly in to try and attack Goku using his arm cannons. Goku would then rip Android 16 apart, right in half. Android 18 was then shocked, as she was so afraid that she would then fly off, which Goku would actually allow it. As Vegeta was furious as to why he let her go, Goku would state, well, it's because of the fact that she didn't necessarily fight, and the fact that she now lives in fear, which is now her problem. But if I see her destroy any more lives or anything, then I'll come destroy her. It's also so Krillin can keep the wife. Come on now, everybody. You, you gotta keep Android 18 around. With this being said, Android 18 was then off into hiding. They would still use the Dragon Balls to wish stuff back, and Krillin would actually make the wish to actually wish for Android 18's bomb to be removed from her body. Bulma would actually work on Android 16 and fix him and reprogram him and also remove the bomb that was in his body. This would mean that Android 16 is now his true self, and he would actually befriend Gohan, and they would actually become really, really good friends, both loving nature. So Gohan now has a new best friend. Android 16 is now a powerful, powerful, powerful security guard, in a way, for Capsule Corp. 
Now that being said, with these new upgrades, of course, Cell then appeared. Cell was then hunting after Android 18, as with Android 17 dead, which he doesn't know about it yet, he can never become perfect. With this being said, Cell would then continue his search destroying cities, which Goku would then find Cell. Now Cell here would then shock Goku, as Goku went to Ultra Ego to fight Cell, Cell would then shoot a solar flare and stab his tail into Goku and start trying to absorb him. This was a severe mistake, as then Cell was completely destroyed, as Cell absorbed Hakai power, and this Hakai destroys any being that touches it, and Cell's not strong enough to even know what this is. Cell would then destroy himself, as he was completely Hakai'd. Wiped out from existence. This also means that with Cell gone, Android 18 is free. She would then get with Krillin later on, but that's a whole different side of the story. That being said, with the androids fully defeated, Trunks would then return, ready to fight the androids with him, to find out that Goku already defeated them, which he wasn't shocked. Trunks would then tell Goku about the fact that, yes, he was able to defeat his own androids and Cell back on his planet in his time, thanks to Goku. He explains that since he is here, he does want to train again with Goku if that's possible, as he wants to grow strong enough to where anything that he fights he can be able to defeat. Goku would actually agree with him, as he thinks that Trunks is a good guy. This is when Vegeta would know that Trunks is his son, but he would then throw this aside, as they would then go back in the hyperbolic time chamber one last time and train together. Now with this time around, with Goku pushing Trunks harder than ever before, Trunks would be able to access Super Saiyan 2. You guys gotta remember is that Trunks already has mastered Super Saiyan. He already has where he's at. On top of the fact that Goku's pushing him near death, Trunks would not be able to fail. As he then turned Super Saiyan 2, which would surprise Goku, Trunks was then exhausted. As Trunks would then leave with Goku, both were truly happy. As then, Trunks would then thank everybody and then go back to his future to where he would continue training with his new power to help rebuild his world. That being said, with Trunks actually being stronger than he was before, as a side note, the Goku Black arc, would it actually happen? I believe yes. Now hear me out. As because it would go a lot more differently, and we'll get into that later on. Since Trunks was a lot more powerful, you could even say that Trunks would unlock Super Saiyan 3 in that later years if you wanted to highball Trunks and make him fun. Because Trunks already unlocked Super Saiyan, he would have already killed Debora way before Debora would have killed the Supreme Kai. This means that Beerus is still alive. Now, you could say that Goku Black would have went after the Supreme Kai first, but I feel like Beerus was awakened during that time. He would have known about Goku Black. And Beerus would have probably killed him alongside either Zamasu if he tried anything. But that's for later on. Now, cutting back to the more current time, with there being peace on Earth, over seven plus years would then pass. The Cell arc would never truly happen as Cell was completely obliterated. There is peace on Earth, finally peace, as life was truly enjoyment. As with these seven years, then somebody will appear. During the tournament, Vegeta had a grudge against Goku as he wants to fight him. During this time, the Supreme Kai would then make himself known, and Gohan would still go to Orange Star High School, but this version of Gohan is not rusty. This version of Gohan is actually stronger than his original self. He has Super Saiyan by this point, but he does not have Super Saiyan 2, as he didn't have much of an anger push to push himself to that new limit. But once when Gohan sees Videl was nearly killed by Spopovich, when he goes to fight Kabito, all that anger would then make him transform into a Super Saiyan 2. This would then surprise everybody, as this was Spopovich's and their perfect time to go absorb his energy. They would then take his energy, and they would then follow him to Bobby's ship. Vegeta was a bit too arrogant, as he would easily defeat Pui Pui, as it was Goku, Gohan, and Vegeta. With this being said along with the Supreme Kai, Goku would easily have defeated Yakon, as Goku at this point actually does have Super Saiyan 1 and 2, but or at least Super Saiyan for at least a start. But he does have Ultra Ego, that's his most powerful form. But he does have Super Saiyan by this point, because it makes sense, as why wouldn't he? That's the most easiest form for Saiyans to get nowadays. With this being said, with the fact that they would have easily defeated Yakon, Babidi was then getting worried, he would then send out Debora to go fight them. He would then take over Vegeta's mind, as Vegeta still wanted to suppress Kakarot. 
Raddus or then Asuna arrived at that point and saw Vegeta, but he would then stay out of the way as he would help Gohan fight Deborah. With Gohan now tapping into his anger once more, he would unlock Super Saiyan 2, and with the help of Raditz, who by this point, I believe, would definitely have Super Saiyan or Super Saiyan 2 by this point. But the fact that he also trains with Goku, at least Super Saiyan, Raditz would be able to kill Deborah alongside with Gohan with pretty much ease. With this being said, Goku would then turn Super Saiyan, and he would actually fight Vegeta on the Rocky Wasteland, and it would be a pretty equal fight. With, remember, Goku's only in Super Saiyan, he would then be battling Vegeta, but then he had enough, as Vegeta wants his true self to come out. He wants to fight Kakarot at his full strength. Goku would then go Ultra Ego, and it would be a sinister fight, as both of them are completely unhinged. Goku would then absolutely dominate Vegeta and completely obliterate him in their fight, not destroy him. With this being said, this was more than enough energy to revive Majin Buu. Goku would then make the same mistake that he always made, and he would then drop his guard. With this being said, Vegeta would then sacrifice himself to kill Majin Buu the same as before, as Raditz and them were too weak. Now once when Majin Buu was brought back, Gohan and Raditz would both go to try to fight Majin Buu. This being said, Majin Buu would be overwhelmed by both of them teaming up on him since they're both training. He would then absorb both of them, growing much more powerful than he did before. And he would also absorb Piccolo and Krillin since they're right there, as Dabur never turned them into stone. Now, Goten and Trunks, of course, are still alive and made in the show. They, were, of course, were not there, as they were told not to. Now, this Super Boo, or this Boo, is much more powerful than his original self was. Now, he's not as powerful as, per se, Boo with Gohan absorbed, but he is close to that power. With that being said, when Goku awakens, he would then go to fight Super Buu, and he would then transform into Ultra Ego. Goku knows that they're trapped inside of Buu, as he would easily destroy this version of Buu. Easily. But he would allow himself to be absorbed, but he keeps a small shield, a key shield around his body, so that he was not absorbed. Buu thought that he won, he was then stuck in his own mind, as Goku then traveled through his body to go find his friends. He would then find them all trapped within a cocoons, as he would then remove every single one, as he would then easily defeat the boo that was inside of his body. He would then free all of them, and, as we know, that there was somebody else inside of that body. Somebody else even worse. He saw another version of Boo, but he looked like a kid. He would then free him anyway, as Boo would then tell him not to, but it was too late. Because of this, or you can say it was evil Boo, but because of this, Boo would then be completely freed of all the evil. As everybody was freed, this is when evil Boo would then make himself known. Both of the Boos would then stare each other down. Goku was confused, but he gets it. That was the evil side of Boo. The Boos would begin fighting. At this point in time around, Goku would not interfere as he doesn't want to get in the way until he needs to. This is when Boo would then try the candy beam, which then Boo would then redirect and turn Majin Buu into chocolate. Because of this, he would then eat him and then transform into Super Buu. Now with this being said, Vegeta would be given 24 hours by the help of Baba, so he would actually help Goku alongside to fight this version of Super Buu. Goku was more than enough to fight this version of Super Buu, but he made a mistake. He needs to free that good version of Buu. That means that he's going to be absorbed again. Vegeta would then stay out of the way, as he thinks that's a horrible idea. Goku was then absorbed again, back inside of Boo's body. Remember, Boo's an idiot, as he thinks that he can absorb him this time, but it was not enough. Goku would then know his way around this time. He would then quickly export to Boo's body, and then find the pod that held Boo. Goku at least owes it to Majin Boo that it was not all of his fault. Now, where's Bobbity in all this? Now, Bobbity was already killed by Vegeta, or you could even say Raditz. But, of course, that was a while ago. As it doesn't really matter either way, with Goku freeing Majin Buu, Super Buu would then stream in agony as he would then revert to Kid Buu. And the first thing that Kid Buu does is try to destroy the entire planet, which Goku would then stop. With Goku and Vegeta teaming up, they would have easily defeated Kid Buu. And with Goku firing a Hakai attack, it would completely obliterate Kid Buu. Kid Buu would have no chance against this version of Goku. That being said... Goku promises Vegeta that they're going to use the Dragon Balls to try and bring him back. As Vegeta would then scoff and laugh at him, saying no, he deserves his punishment. 
but he'll decide to stay in hell for a little while. The Supreme Kai would actually offer to train Vegeta and even Gohan, as telling them that he at least owes them that much. Goku, remember this time around, he wouldn't necessarily accept it, as he already is strong enough, but the Supreme Kai needs to have a word with Goku. Supreme Kai would then explain to Goku who Lord Beerus is in way better detail, and all the universes, and what his power actually is, giving Goku a better understanding. And the Supreme Kai states that if one day Beerus ever finds out, it's going to be crazy. This time around, with Vegeta training alongside with Gohan, both of them would continue growing much more powerful. With that being said, Gohan would be the one that would train with the sword more than Vegeta, as he's not like a sword user. They would still then test it out by throwing the strongest metal, which would then break, having Elder Kai come out. Elder Kai would then do the ritual for both Vegeta and Gohan, making them both unlock their mystic forms, which would greatly, greatly increase their power, making them much more powerful than they originally were. Vegeta, by this point, having his mystic form, would definitely, on top of the fact that he's a lot more powerful in terms of base form-wise, would definitely be way more powerful than definitely Ultimate Gohan was, maybe more Buhan is. Same with Gohan. Goku was honestly proud of his son, and then there was peace for a few years. As far off in the distance, a purple cat would then awaken, feeling this power that he hasn't felt alongside from himself. And now, he's ready to head to Earth. After the defeat of Majin Buu, peace was finally restored on Earth. As the next few years would pass, life was actually peaceful. Gohan would end up getting married soon, and end up being with Fidel, as life was finally peaceful. The difference here is Lord Beerus would then soon wake up and have his dream about fighting a true rival, a Super Saiyan God. He would then ask Whis to look at all the Saiyans that are still alive. Whis would then pause on Goku and state that there's something different about him. He was able to use destruction abilities. This would shock Beerus as he thought he felt something. Maybe it was his brother he thought, but this, this is impossible. He's mortal. Whis explains that apparently he's had this since birth. Or maybe somehow he was able to unlock it. He doesn't know, but this piqued Beerus' interest massively. He wants to go meet the Saiyan and right now. They would then take off to planet Earth, where Son Goku was at Bulma's party. As they were on the ma massive ship, they would be enjoying a peaceful time as it was Bulma's 38th birthday party. Life was actually peaceful. This time around though, they were not warned about Beerus from King Kai. So Beerus would then just show up, and no one would not know who he was, but Vegeta would then realize, and he would be petrified. Beerus would then explain himself and state that he is here to meet Son Goku. Goku would then reveal himself, as Beerus would then check Goku out, looking him up and down, inspecting him, seeing that he seems different, he can sense destruction within him. It's incredible, he never thought a mortal could possess his power. He would then tell Goku about what is he searching for and who he is, and he would then challenge Goku to a match. Goku would never turn this down, but he doesn't want to do this near Bulma's ship, so they would fly somewhere else. But before they do, Goku asked if they can eat first, as he's super hungry. Beerus would actually agree, as he is a foodie, as he definitely wants to try out the Earth food. He would then fall in love with it, eating sushi alongside Whis and other meats and other products. After he was really satisfied, he was now ready to fight. This time around, Goku would not know what a Super Saiyan God is, but maybe he thinks that that's what his form is. Maybe his form is a Saiyan God, but he doesn't know, but he's going to give it his best shot, as it would then fly off to a distant location. Vegeta and the others would then follow Swoop, alongside with Raditz and Launch, as they would then want to see this fight going down. Goku would then turn Super Saiyan, which would be kind of interesting, but it would not be his interest. He wants to see his real form. Goku would then transform into Super Saiyan 2, and he'd begin his attack on Beerus, which Beerus would easily deflect his attacks like it was nothing. Beerus was starting to get agitated, as he told him to show him his destruction powers, not these fake little forms. Goku would then agree, as he would then transform into Ultra Ego. This would then so shock Lord Beerus that he was able to access this, but he was thrilled at the same time. Though it's not perfected, it's really wild and not controlled. But he understands this because he's immortal, as he doesn't even possess true god key, so it might be a reason why he's never trained in it purposely. Goku would then charge in and land a few blows on Lord Beerus, as this version of Goku with Ultra Ego in the base form is similar to Blue Evolution Vegeta from the Tournament of Power, and he only grows stronger as he fights. 
The fight would then continue as it would get super intense. Beerus was having the fun time of his life, battling back and forth with Goku. But Goku can see that Beerus doesn't even have any damage on him. Is Beerus still holding back? As Goku would then power up to his full strength, he would then continue his assault as Beerus would then put the beat down on Goku. This would make Goku more sinister, as the more damage that he was receiving, the stronger he was becoming, which this is what Beerus wants. Beerus would then prove a point. As they continue fighting, the match would continue on as he would fly up into space. Beerus would then launch a Hakai at Goku as he wants to see how well his control is. Goku would actually catch the Hakai and redirect it right at Beerus, who would deflect it pretty easily. Beerus would be impressed and wants to see more. Beerus would then power up as he would then start to severely wound Goku and start to really hurt him. This would make Goku crazy as he continues to fight Beerus, his power level reaching its maximum. Until Goku would then lose consciousness as he would then drop out of the form. He would quickly regain consciousness as he would then look as he can't even move anymore. Beerus would then explain that while it is true, he has grown exponentially more powerful with this Ultra Ego power, but there's a downside. You get too crazy, and once when you take too much damage, your body will soon get out. Especially fighting someone like me. Beerus would then say that he's going to destroy planet Earth. This would then make Goku snap, as Goku would then transform to Ultra Ego one more time and fire a Hakai Kamehameha wave something he's been practicing. It hits Beerus dead on, as it causes a massive explosion of purple lightning and energy. Goku then powered down, as he was completely exhausted, using up all of his power, plus with the injuries sustained to him. Beerus would then appear right in front of him, with little to no damage on his body at all. This would then shock Goku, as he would have thought that his most powerful attack would have worked. Beerus would then give his respect to Goku, and then bring him back down to Earth, where Whis will actually heal him instantly. Beerus would then explain that he's not going to destroy the Earth, but he offers Goku to come to his planet and train, as he would be a perfect destroyer. Goku would not really agree to be a destroyer, but he definitely wants to learn. Beerus knows that maybe his mind can be changed, so he would accept it anyway. Vegeta definitely wants to tag along, as this is not fair. Beerus would then look at Vegeta and question it, thinking that he doesn't deserve to go. But, Goku would then ask if Vegeta can come, as because Vegeta is an incredible sparring partner and he'd be great to motivate him. Beerus would then be reluctant, but Whis says that let Son Goku decide. As actually he took his side for once, Beerus would then agree as long as he brings excellent food, as Goku can use that good term and state that while Bulma is super rich, he can bring you tons of food all the time. This would then make him fully agree and say yes, sure. So him and Vegeta would then leave. Their training will be a lot different. The beginning will be this similar, as Goku and Vegeta both had to learn how to control their energy and how to even use Gaki to begin with. Goku this time around, would he unlock Super Saiyan Blue? Yes, I feel like he would, because again, when him and Vegeta learned how to keep the key contained and learn how to control it, they did tap into the blue power. So it would make sense that they would have access to it, but Goku doesn't see a need for it. But Vegeta does. But this time around, Whis would actually speak to Goku, and he would state that while it is true that Ultra Ego is an incredible power for you, you're naturally born in it, you have something greater within you, as your mind is more calm than wild. Vegeta thinks that while well, Kakarot can access this, maybe he could, but that's for a later date, as now this time around, Frieza would then be revived, similar to, to before. Psych. Frieza's not being brought back to life this time, as there's no Frieza arc. Why? Because Frieza was Hakai'd ages ago. Frieza's completely obliterated, there's no bringing him back. Unless they use the Super Dragon Balls to bring him back, sadly Frieza's gone. So sadly, there will be no Golden Frieza arc. This means that Goku and Vegeta can continue training without pause. This means that Vegeta will continue to find ways to push his limits to grow the power even further. This means that once when the Universe 6 arc happens, Vegeta and the others would go fight the same as before. The only difference around here is that Vegeta is actually stronger than his original self because he's battling Goku. Goku is a lot more powerful than Vegeta. Vegeta would still, I feel like, face off against Hit, and he would still struggle against Hit immensely, about to lose, until he would then showcase a new power that he worked on. He understood that Super Saiyan Blue is a great power, but it has drawbacks, as he would then transform into Blue Evolution. This would then surprise Goku, as he didn't even expect this. 
Once when Vegeta's pushed into a corner, he'll break his limits. Vegeta, now being at least 20 times stronger, would overpower Hit, as he was too fast for Hit's time skip. This would also give Vegeta time to learn Hit's time skip, until Hit would then use his most powerful move. He would then trap Vegeta in a time barrier, trapping him within time itself. As Vegeta was stuck, Hit would then knock him off the stage, nearly killing him, almost exploding his heart. But once when Hit has won, it was Goku's turn. Goku already knows his moves and his abilities. As the fight would then begin, Goku would then transform into Ultra Ego, which this would then shock Champa as he never expected a mortal could use his power. It terrified him. Hit had no chance against this version of Goku. He Goku allowed him to use his time skip abilities to hit him, but it did nothing to him. Hit would then use his deadly attacks. Goku would then tell Hit to not hold back and to try and kill him. He would then even tell the ring announcer to change the rules if they both allow it, that killing is allowed, as he wants to fight Hit at his max power. Beerus and Champa would then actually agree, as now that that was allowed, Hit would then not hold back, powering up as he was adapting to Goku. Hit would then hit Goku right in the heart, but it would only make Goku laugh like crazy, as he would then grab Hit and deliver a powerful gut punch sending him back. Hit would then use all of his time skip abilities, as Goku was able to deflect and dodge them, Goku was near the edge as Hit would then use the, the time skipping attack, freezing Goku completely. Goku would then look at his hand, as he would slowly look up, as he would then begin walking forward, overpowering Hit's power. As he would then do a Jiren and crush the ball in his hand, as this was the same exact move that Hit did on Jiren the Healer Power, showing his ungodly strength. This would even surprise Beerus that Hit had this kind of power, but Goku was able to overpower it. Goku would then deliver a massive kick to Hit, knocking him right off of the arena, making Goku the winner of the tournament. This also means that Beerus won, but Beerus would still make the wish to wish back Champa's Earth. Zeno would make himself known, and Goku would become best friends with him already, as he would promise to play hide and seek with them or something later on. Goku would then ask Zeno to, hey, we should do another thing like this later on, which Zeno would actually agree. So for this time around, most of the events would go the exact same after this. Now what about the Goku Black arc? Now we know that Goku Black went to a different timeline to seal Goku's body. That is true. Now we could give Goku Black Ultra Ego, but that wouldn't really make sense because it just didn't really seem like that would make a lot of sense plot-wise. It would make more sense to have Goku Black have Rosé, as that's more or less his taste. Similar thing with Zamasu, he would still make the wish the same as before, but could things become different? When Zamasu fights Goku, Goku would not just go Super Saiyan 2, he would then showcase his god ability going Ultra Ego. This might change Zamasu's ideals because of the fact that even though True is immortal, but he's also a god now because he knows destruction abilities. He might be too much of a threat, but I believe that this would make Zamasu want Goku's body even more because he has the body of a destroyer that would be perfect to take over. Once when Zamasu goes to a different timeline and takes over Goku's body, this is Goku from a normal timeline. This means that this is Super Saiyan Rose. Though it is true, he doesn't have access to Ultra Ego, but he will grow stronger as we'll see later on. This time around though, Trunks would still be battling Goku Black where he would then escape just in time, meeting Goku and Vegeta into the future. Instead of Goku showcasing Super Saiyan 3, he would then showcase Super Saiyan God, or maybe even Super Saiyan Blue, or maybe even Ultra Ego. Once when Goku Black appears, Goku would then fight him in Super Saiyan 2, pretty much being actually stronger than him, until Goku Black was then pulled back into the Time Rift. Because of this, they would then go to the future for the first time. This time around, things are a lot more different. Once when Goku Black appeared, Zamasu was still sneaking around. Zamasu was still there as he was immortal, but Go he wouldn't, we don't see him yet. Goku Black this time around would continue his fight, as the first person who would actually fight was Vegeta. As Vegeta would then transform into Super Saiyan Blue, his fight with Goku Black would be interesting as he would easily overpower him in his base form, until Goku Black would then transform into Rose. This is when the fight would be pretty even, as he would then overpower Vegeta, until, before he could stab him, Vegeta would then grab his hand. He would then showcase Blue Evolution. He would then overpower Goku Black, nearly killing him, but there was a problem as he dropped his guard. Merge Zamasu would then appear, and Immortal Zamasu, the other one, would then appear out of nowhere from the shadows, stabbing Vegeta the same as before, knocking him over. 
With Vegeta severely wounded, Goku would then jump into fight as Trunks would actually battle the immortal Zamasu while Goku would then go fight Goku Black. They would then pull Vegeta away and try and keep him alive, but Vegeta's gonna die from these wounds. Goku would then transform into Ultra Ego as Goku Black's eyes would widen, stating how beautiful he was, as Goku would easily dominate Goku Black, overpowering him with absolute ease. Zamasu was terrified because Hakai can affect him, but with this time around, Trunks would then tell Goku that they need to leave or else Vegeta's gonna die. This time around, we know that Trunks got so furious that he turned into his rage mode. This time around, however, Goku's gonna stay. Goku would tell Trunks to get Vegeta out of here, get him healed, and then bring him back. Trunks would then nod and actually leave, as both of them fighting Goku at the same time, Goku was able to easily fight them off. Knowing the fact that they're running out of options, they only have one ideal. They would then take off the earring, and they would then fuse into Merge Zamasu. They would then begin their fight with Goku, as this fight would be a bit more even, but not necessarily. Goku here has grown much more stronger since we last saw him, considering the fact that he's training non-stop, and he's also learning new tricks from Lord Beerus. He would easily overpower Merge Zamasu, causing him to mutate and grow and deform. Goku here knows that he needs to end this, and he learned this from Lord Beerus. He would then extend his hand out and then yell Hakai. Now this was the legit Hakai as Zamasu would then scream as he was completely destroyed. Now here's the difference though, is that it is true that this is the different version of Zamasu. Would Zamasu become one with the universe? I don't think so, because true his body was destroyed, but his being was not destroyed. The Hakai destroys every bit of the being. Could it overpower the magic of the Dragon Balls? Probably not, but then why would Zeno be able to destroy him since the Dragon Balls have more power than Zeno does, as the Dragon Balls have more potential? So you kind of have to throw that in there. The fact that the Dragon Balls are limitless, so it wouldn't make sense. So yes, Merge Zamasu would be completely obliterated as Goku would win. As this time around though, everyone would be truly happy to see each other. Goku would then actually see some of his old, well, they would see Goku as a member of his old friends. Now this time around, things would be different. Since Trunks' future is saved in a way, would the others be able to come back? Well, I would definitely say yes, because Goku knows where Planet Namek is, he just needs help getting there. And Goku would then yell out for King Kai. Now, okay, yes, I know, I know, I know, hear me out. Once when he yells out for King Kai, things will go differently here, as King Kai would then tell him where New Namek is. It's feel like it's been a long time, he would be able to help them. As with the help though, Goku would be able to get enough resources alongside everybody else, as they definitely have spaceships in the Capsule Corp. Now, of course, Goku doesn't really know how to use a spaceship, but with some maybe some humans that are intelligent might be able to help him, Goku would be able to travel to New Namek, and he would be able to see the Namekians. Now, we don't know if the Namekians are still alive or not, but for plot reasons for the what if, I'm gonna say that they are. Goku would make the wish to bring all of them back, as a dragon can do that, he would then say to bring back everyone that Goku Black has killed. First things first. The dragon would then allow it, and then he would state to bring back everyone that the androids and Cell have killed all those years ago. Wish the Dragon Balls would then allow. And then for the final wish, Goku would then state that that's for whatever what you want. But then he has an idea. He would then ask the dragon if they can bring back the Supreme Kai, which the dragon would state that he can. Now, I know that in reality, the dragon probably cannot do this at all, but for plot and what if reasons, we're going off the board, so be mad at me all you want, I don't care. Supreme Kai was then brought back as he was on Earth. This also means that Beerus was not there. Now, okay, now, okay, hold on, hear me out. He wished back the Supreme Kai, not Beerus. Beerus is gone, he's history. Even if the Supreme Kai is brought back, Beerus can easily fight it off and state that, well, Either way, Beerus is not there, because he's already dead. He didn't wish for Beerus back, wish only for the Supreme Kai to be brought back. So, because of this, this also means that once when Goku arrives back on Earth, this would then be a different time. All of his friends would be tear-jerking, seeing Goku. As, funny thing is, Goku, they already saw him in the other world. But it's weird, because Goku was not brought back in this time. Remember, Goku died naturally. But they thought that Goku was brought back with him, but he would explain that he's from a different timeline. As he would explain that things turned out differently. 
This time around, though, he would then tell everybody that he's sorry that he wasn't able to fight them, as Trunks was able to go back in time, and he was able to save him and everybody else. And a lot has changed. He would then even go up to Vegeta and the others and tell him about the Supreme Kai. And tell him about, well, here we go as we can now begin training. Now think about it, remember, the Supreme Kai definitely owes Goku for bringing him back. The Supreme Kai has a problem. There's no God of Destruction. If God of Destruction's not around, what's he gonna do? Goku would then explain that he's sure that they can work it out. As then, by this point, time works a bit differently, Trunks and Vegeta would then appear as Vegeta hopped out and blew ready to fight. But he would then see that everybody was standing here. But Trunks would then step out and be shocked to see that everyone was there. His mother, all of his friends, as he would then hug his mother, upset that he let her down. As then Vegeta was completely shocked to see his son. Mainly Trunks was, as he would then hug his son and tell him he's proud of him. That being said, this is when some things are going to change. But now, Trunks would then see Gohan. He would then cry and hug his old master. As Gohan would explain how proud of him he was with how powerful he's become. Goku would then tell the Supreme Kai from his timeline all that he really knew. And he would then kind of, in though Supreme Kai says that time travel is illegal and all that, Goku says, yeah, he knows. But he did stop a guy who was time traveling anyway. After some help, they would then leave, as the Supreme Kai actually has an idea for Trunks. As then, back in their normal timeline, as things are back to normal now, this is where some things are going to be changing. With this being said, would the Tournament of Power still happen? Yes, it would. Why? Because Zeno already knew about it. Goku already gave him the idea. With that being said, a lot of the events will go the exact same with the Tournament of Power. The only difference here is that they would never recruit Frieza, since, well, Frieza's kind of gone, so there's no version of him. And would Android 17 be around? I believe so, since, remember, they wish back everybody, so I would believe so as well. Now, that being said, either if Android 17 was there or not, Goku and the M are much more powerful. But they do need more stronger fighters. This is where something's going to take a turn. Whis would then scope the entire universe looking for a powerful key source. He would then find one. It was none other than Broly. Broly was on planet Vampa, as in this time around, Chi Lai and Lemo, they were never really working for Frieza. They were exploring on their own, where they where their ship crashed and they landed on planet Vampa. And they would then meet Broly and Paragus the same as before. But this time around, there was no Frieza to go to. And yes, this is a few years earlier. They would still become best friends with Broly. And this is when Goku would then introduce himself to Broly and offer him to come help fight. Because if he can, then that means that Broly can help them win. Paragus would have no choice but to agree. As if he doesn't, Beerus would then show up and destroy everybody. The Tournament of Power would go very similar. But we are going to get into that in the final What If video. But anyway, that is it for this. What if you guys thank y'all for watching? Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Let me know what you guys think down below. I really do appreciate it. Let's get to 20,000 subscribers, and I'll talk to you all later.